In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a timer inside of Adobe After Effects. You can change the fonts, you can add percentages, you can add currency signs. There's lots that you can do with this technique. So let's get into it. So first of all, we want to begin by going up to the T icon inside of After Effects, which is the horizontal type tool, select in your video and type out a number. I'm just going to go for zero. Then you want to go to the character window on the right side, or alternatively, if you have updated your After Effects recently, then you'll notice this text window appear. So we can just go in and make all of the adjustments that we want. So we can change the font, we can increase the size, do what we want, and then just center this up. Now I'm just going to place this in the very center of my composition. And there we go. We have our first number. But at the moment, you can see that he's not doing anything. So in order to animate this, we want to go into the effects window. So that is effects and presets. And we're going to search for slider. So slider control should appear and we can drop that onto our text. Great. Now we need to link the source text to the slider controls. And in order to do that, we need to go into the drop down arrow in zero, go into text to reveal source text. Now we'll go into effects, slider control, and we have slider. Now we want to go into the source text on zero. We want to go to this spiral icon, which is our property pick whip tool and drag that down onto slider. Now you could drag it down onto this slider or you can go up to effect controls and drag it here, whichever one you prefer, but I'm going to drop that onto slider. And as you'll see, nothing has happened, although these are now linked. So if we go into slider and we change the number, you can see the number is going to change. So if we wanted to make a count up, so maybe we start at zero and we count up to 10, then we can start at zero, create a brand new keyframe on slider at zero, go to around 10 seconds and pull that up to 10. So you would think that is now done. Although when we play this back, you'll notice this is happening. And this is because we are seeing every single variation of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So we're seeing 0 0.11, 0 0.111, 0 point, and so on. So we want to round this off to just even numbers, to whole numbers. And in order to do that, we need to get a little bit technical, but don't worry, I'm going to guide you through it. So the first step is to go into the source text and select the drop down arrow, and this will reveal the linked expression. So we are linking the source text to the slider control, and that is the expression for that. If you don't know what expressions are inside of Adobe After Effects, they are essentially the After Effects equivalent of coding. So we're putting in some codes and that is going to create a prompt and then After Effects will create the prompt. Now, a lot of complex animation inside of Adobe After Effects is built on these expressions or these codes. So once you start to understand these, you really unlock a whole new side to Adobe After Effects. But we want to add a specific code or expression into this to get our whole numbers. So you want to select that expression. Then you want to go to the end and press the enter button. So you want to go to the line below. Now we are going to type in the expression dot value dot two fixed open bracket zero closed bracket and then from there you do not want to press enter you want to click out of the box because if you press enter it places this onto a new line and breaks the expression so keep that on the same line click out and now when we play this back you'll notice this is now counting up in whole numbers and now because this is controlled by our keyframes, we don't just have to keep this at 10 seconds. If we wanted to speed that up, then we could just shorten the gap and it will count a lot quicker. And if we wanted to do a countdown, then we just reverse the keyframes and we count down. And let's say we wanted to go from a really high number. Well, in that case, you would just go to that first keyframe. So I'll zoom all the way in, go to that first keyframe and we can just pull that up to a really high number. And now that's going to count down all the way down to zero. Of course, as well, because we've applied these expressions onto a text layer, if we go onto the text layer and we go into our text window, we can actually change the font of this countdown. So at the moment, I'm monster at, but if we change to a different font, so we'll go to this one, you can see we've now got this countdown on a different font. We can change the color. We can do everything we like. So we've got full custom control over the look of this timer. Now that's all well and good doing that, but let's say we wanted to do something with accounting, for example, maybe we wanted to show currency. Well, how would we do that? Let's say we want to go from one value to another. So let's say, let's delete these keyframes. Let's say our start point was zero. 
So we started at zero pounds and then we ended up after a little bit of time with let's say 112 pounds and 50 pence. Well, you notice if I put 112.50, it doesn't work, it goes up to 113. And that is because the expression that we have put in has forced this to round off to a whole decimal. So when we look at our expression in the source text, it says value to fix zero. Now this zero is linked to how many decimal points we are seeing. So zero is going to be no decimal points, so we're just gonna have a round number. Whereas when we go to two, this means we're gonna have two decimal points, and now we can see 11250. So we're going all the way up to 11250. And you can get really precise in here and go to 11257. And you can see that's gonna go up to 112.57. So you can get very specific. And if you wanted to add a pound sign or a currency sign onto the start of this, we just want to click into our source text. We'll go to the very beginning of the expression. So line one, the first character, we want to put our first set of speech marks. Then you can put your currency of choice I'm going to select pounds because I'm British. Then I'll select another speech mark. Then add a space, the plus button, another space and click out. And now you'll notice there is a pound sign locked at the start. And we don't just have to keep this as a pound sign. If you wanted to, you could change this to the dollar and it will change like this. Or alternatively, we can change it to maybe a hashtag, for example. So there's many different things that you can do here and it doesn't just have to be a symbol. You could put a word in there. So just put anything in between. So let's go for CAN as if we're doing Canadian dollars, for example. And as you can see, that is going to do this. So it's a really useful and powerful tool. Now you'll notice because this is center aligned, the pound sign is skipping all over the place. Doesn't look great. So to avoid that, I'm going to go into paragraph and I'm going to left align this. Then obviously because that has moved over, I need to move that back over to the left by pressing P on the keyboard to load position, moving that over. And now you'll notice the pound sign is locked and everything else is animating with the pound sign locked. So it's all animating over to the right. Now there's only one more thing that I need to show you in this tutorial, and that is how to add your percentage sign because obviously your currency is at the start, but a percentage sign would be at the end. So in order to do that, we need to go back into our expression. So text, source text, we'll go into this expression and we'll delete what we added. So if we click out, it's removed the pound sign. Now, if we go to the very end, we're going to go space plus space, speech marks, and then your percentage symbol. And then you want to close that off again with another set of speech marks and click out and now you'll notice the percentage symbol has locked at the end but again the percentage symbol is skipping all over the place because this value is changing so to counteract that i'm going to go into paragraph and right align this again we need to move the position over and now when we play this back you'll notice this is all animating with the percentage locked so there's a lot that you can do with this technique, but this is going to give you complete control on your countdowns, timer, currency, animation. There's loads that you can do with this technique. So hopefully this video was useful. Hopefully this is going to help you create some really awesome effects. And if you did enjoy watching this video, then please consider checking out one of my other videos by clicking this playlist just up here. So thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you on a future video. See you there.